Hello, and welcome to this e-research presentation, Galaxy Australia, a strengthened national life science service that engages globally. I'm Gareth Price. I'll be joined shortly by my co-author, Simon Gladman, and we're presenting on behalf of all our other authors and our host organisations, QCIF Bioinformatics, Melbourne Bioinformatics, and Australian Biocommons. Galaxy Australia is a hosted web accessible platform that lets you conduct accessible, reproducible, and transparent computational biological research. In essence, it is a screen grab. It's a web interface that allows users to interact with computing infrastructure in Australia. What do we know about those users? Well, we follow them, and we follow them by a number of metrics, and two of the more digestible ones are shown here. The increase in total user numbers since in this case mid 2019 and the increase in jobs by the same time frame and both of those metrics have been reassuringly tracking upwards and one of the fun metrics we can look at is when do we cross over a big number so we passed our first millionth job in february 2020 our second millionth in february 2021 and our third millionth even more recently just in this september gone and what can we do with those kind of numbers? But what can we do from what we learn from our users? Well, as just shown on the previous slide, they really do want greater job size and capacity uh, to run more jobs, but important to run more jobs concurrently. We'll come to that later. Uh, greater tool range and tools and workflows tailored for their research. They want more references, so reference genomes and reference data sets and easier ways to move data in and out. Some of these are being enabled uh, locally in Australia, some are being enabled globally, and some we've led by enabling locally and propagated out to the global code base. And since we last presented at eResearch, significant new investment by the Australian Biocommons, Arnet, ARDC, NCI, PAUSI, the University of Melbourne, QCIF, and the Queensland Government have helped drive Galaxy to a new level. And that includes large compute nodes at NCI and PAUSI, dedicated high memory to and four terabyte nodes nationally, the deployment and running of training as an infrastructure service to continue to upskill Australian researchers. And through our community engagements brokered by the Australian Biocommons, feature additions to the service. And with that, I'll hand over to Simon, who's gonna describe some of the infrastructures that have underpinned uh, these new services to Australia. Thanks, Gareth, and hello, everybody. My name is Simon Gladman, and I'm the lead engineer of Galaxy Australia. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the improvements we've made to our service over the last 12 months. Over the last 12 months, we've redesigned and re-implemented our system to make it able to support an ever-growing service with an ever-increasing capacity. This mainly including us closely investigating and analyzing what a Galaxy service looks like from a functional point of view, and also talking to have administrators of other Galaxy servers around the world. And so our final architecture looks something like this. And all of the VMs in the system are all built um, using Terraform and all fully configured using Ansible. And we don't make any changes to the live machines. We only interact uh, with them via the GitHub repo in which all of our Ansible playbooks are kept and um, any changes are made to our system by pull request. And we found that this makes everything completely and utterly reproducible and much more stable. So any bioinformatics tool that any of our users may need are installed by a fully automatic system, once again, using a GitHub repository and a Jenkins server. And over the last 12 months, we've also been given access to quite a lot of compute resource, um, all of it remote to our core service. These additions have included a large uh, cloud node at NCI, which we're going to be using for training and other uses. We've also been given access to uh, large high memory nodes in Brisbane and Melbourne that have 256 cores and four terabytes of RAM each. And we have a number of other distributed uh, compute resources available to us around the country. Now, all of these compute resources have been configured as what we call Pulsar servers. And uh, Galaxy is able to um, communicate with these Pulsar servers and get them to run jobs on Galaxy's behalf, which is wonderful. And so we're able to make Galaxy basically make use of all this remote compute resource 
um, via this network of Pulsar servers. But as you imagine, this provides quite a challenge to load balance um, our job scheduling across all this disparate resource. One of the challenges of our job scheduler has been how to handle training workshops. Uh, during a training workshop, we will have many students. Uh, they will be running many jobs. Uh, most of them are small jobs and uh, they're all quite time constrained. They all need to be run and completed during the time of the workshop. We can't have um, student jobs sitting around in the main queue waiting uh, to, be, to be scheduled to a computer resource. Um, and as a lot of the jobs are quite small, they can run quite quickly. And so we decided to implement the Galaxy Europe system called TS or Training Infrastructure as a Service, which basically lets us carve off part of our available computer resource and build a dedicated job queue to that computer resource for a particular workshop. And uh, we've been heavily utilizing the compute resource that was made available to us by NCI for this purpose. One of the extra benefits of TS is that the instructor of any workshop gets access to uh, a workshop dashboard in which they can track the students of their workshops jobs and how complete they are and if any of them failed, et cetera, et cetera. So that takes care of training, <clears throat> but how do we handle normal jobs across the rest of our resource. Well, we really decided we really needed a meta scheduler. And so we, we wrote one and we, we've called it the Total Perspective Vortex. And it's a job meta scheduler which works with all of our available resource and it can schedule jobs based upon the current use of our end resources, uh, the type of job that we want to be able to run, the size of that particular job. Um, there may be constraints placed around uh, different users and which end um, endpoints they are able to use and also some tools may not work on Pulsar that great uh, under different circumstances and so we may need to place restrictions on, on things like that but um, we may want to add in other business rules as well but to stop us from completely reinventing the wheel we decided to incorporate ideas from all of the other used galaxy.star sites around the globe and using um, parts of the existing dynamic tool destination system, which is built into Galaxy. And so we wrote the total perspective vortex and the code for it is based here. Now it's currently in testing and it's enabled us to schedule jobs across very disparate um, resource end types, uh, taking into account their current loads, etc. cetera. And um, we've been feeding this back into the global Galaxy community and uh, it's been taken up by um, Galaxy America and most likely will be taken up by Galaxy Europe as well, which means it will be able to have shared resources, et cetera, for this system. And in the future, it will become part of the standard Galaxy offering. And the main reason we really wanted to do this was to be able to handle the specialist resources that we've been given access to, to be able to balance the loads across all of these resources. And now Gareth is going to talk to you a little bit about the types of jobs that we run on those resources and the communities that they support. Take it away, Gareth. Thank you, Simon. Now we thought we would tell what these improvements mean to our users through some examples. So firstly, high memory job capacity or high memory and high versatility nodes were brought on uh, quite recently to the Galaxy Australia arsenal. And they include fast CPU, large amounts of RAM and NVMe local storage. One of the communities that's really benefited from early access to these particular nodes is our genome assembly communities. So through BioPlatforms Australia, and through their data portal where data for Genomics Australian plants, Ozarks and the Threatened Species Initiative have been deposited. And as showcased in the uh, BioCommons news story, shown at the bottom of the screen there, Galaxy Australia, has enabled data ingest from the data portal through to uh, the production of high quality genomes using these high machines. Example shown here and followed over the next slide or two is the one of the OzArc species. The uh, workflow itself takes the import, does some data transformation and assembles the genome and does quite an important role, which is the post assembly quality control assessment and visualization that really allows the user to interact with their genome and understand the quality of the genome. The high memory nodes has also meant 
that in parallel users can do multiple assemblies and really make sure that they're assembling their genome in the best way possible. So the example, as shown and mentioned, the Ozark reptile managed to assemble a primary genome in under two hours, which was a phenomenal achievement. Shown on the left-hand side of the screen and highlighted are a number of the key metrics for that genome assembly. Importantly, the total genome size is quite equivocal to one of the closely related species to our exemplar shown here today. And on the right-hand side is the bandage image, a visual representation of the 3,444 contigs that make up that genome, showing their linearity and non-complexity, which shows a high quality genome assembly. Next was Galaxy branching out, but branching out and really the question is why? And so let's start at the start. Galaxy is branching out mainly because our users ask for it, which is really one of the single most important reasons why we deploy new functionality on Galaxy is because Australian researchers need it. And why is also because Galaxy Australia and Galaxy Global is more and more omics and not just genomics as its traditional user base. The next couple of slides talk about one of those tools, in particular the HitMap tool, as uh, onboarded into Galaxy, wrapped and deployed by one of the Galaxy Australia team members, Grace Hall. The tool uh, processes high resolution multi imaging data. This is where a sample, often in relation to an anatomical pathology section showing the uh, formation of the tissue, is on a parallel slide processed at a pixel level, so rasterized, to produce a proteomics or peptide profile from each of those spots so that researchers can track how their protein abundance changes by anatomical position within a tissue. What this meant for Galaxy was, well, how did we do it? Essentially, it was wrapped for Galaxy, so made available as shown in the intera interactive GIF here on the right-hand side. It produces a HTML image as shown on the previous slides, and importantly, a large complex data file collection of peptide abundances associated with geographical positions within the tissue. What's really nice to see and what highlights the uh, complexity of analysis for Galaxy Australia is that this has been submitted to Galaxy P or Galaxy Proteomics, one of the global Galaxy resources. And Grace is working closely with the primary authors of HitMap to increase its underlying functionality to both make the tool itself better and also make the Galaxy Wrapped tool version more applicable to our researchers. By the same vein, I wanted to show a new Galaxy interactive tool. And interactive tools are a relatively new feature to Galaxy that allow the users to interact with their data in what we might consider a more traditional data exploration mode, really getting in and messing around with their data. And environments that enable that uh, classically would be RStudio and Jupyter Notebook. And they also, on the flip side, they allow Galaxy code wrappers an opportunity for building functionality uh, relevant to user requests that are outside what would have been the traditional user request of please make my command line script available in Galaxy. To that end, and by a similar route as previous, user requests drove uh, the exploration and eventual deployment to Galaxy Australia and Galaxy World uh, by Cameron Hyde, another one of the Galaxy Australia team, the IC tool, which is an exploration and visual visualization tool for spatial single cell RNA-seq data sets. Kind of cool in itself and it came from a user request. Also think it's wonderful that it also supports the community building that we are engaged with through the Australian BioCommons. By uh, extension, one of the more fascinating uh, recent deployments to Galaxy, and it's an ongoing work, so we're excited to be able to present this here today, is access to GPUs, and they're driven 
by quite a phenomenal new tool called AlphaFold, which is uh, a pro 3D protein structure prediction tool that is by all benchmarking vastly more accurate than other tools. And it's also very, very attractive because it is able to predict protein structure where no similar structure is currently known. And this is new functionality. So it's useful for functional annotation as suggested just now in non-model organisms, but all elements of structural biology, including protein-protein interactions, ligand receptor binding interactions, and signal transduction cascades, just to name a few. And it's particularly useful, and this harks back to my PhD, for predicting variant analysis in 3D protein structure. What made it particularly fascinating for Galaxy Australia, and Galaxy in general, is an absolute requirement for fast GPU access. So this was, to be fair, a great excuse for Galaxy Australia and the BioCommons to explore access to commercial cloud and specifically GPU access on commercial cloud. And this is currently being done through Azure via BizData and AWS with the vision that AlphaFold will be deployed on commercial software to allow researchers to bring multiple protein alignments and predict uh, their 3D protein structure. Where are we up to? Well, the testing is ongoing, but uh, as we deploy our existence and uh, instances onto commercial cloud, we've been in parallel deploy getting access, thanks to Galaxy Europe, particularly Bjorn and John Morrow, um, to a GPU instance in Galaxy Europe for the development of this tool in the Galaxy framework. What we've noted are a couple of things. There is definitely a relationship between the query length and the uh, time for tool completion. And that is both the, in the database searching for uh, similar sequences and also in the folding elements of the application, which are the non-GPU bound and GPU bound uh, parts of the functionality. Shown on the right is some really nice data looking at multiple sequences of 50 amino acids, 500 amino acids and 1000 amino acids in both the database searching time and the folding time and the CPU, the GPU, sorry, utilization. So in conclusion, Galaxy Australia really is now a critical digital research infrastructure for Australian life sciences communities and more broadly through its interactions with the global Galaxy ecosystem. And in many ways, this is no better exemplified than in two Nature publications released in the last month in Nature Biotech and Nature Methods, which cite the Galaxy Australia team and the global Galaxy ecosystem. With that, Galaxy Australia is, is emboldened and is now planning on hosting both regional and global conferences to bring Galaxy practitioners from all around the world to, Galaxy, to Australia to learn from our journey and to help inform our path forward. So one day, I hope to be the host in the way that I'm an attendant at this conference now and host you at our Galaxy conference. In the meantime, please come and put us to use at usegalaxy.org.au. And with that, it remains with me to thank our increasingly growing and complex and extremely competent team as shown here on this slide, all our funding and infrastructure and support partners as highlighted down the bottom. Thank you very much.